And I said, I got something for you in my purse. I said, Kendall wanted you to have. And I pulled the things out. And she said, what is it? I said, it's condom. She just fell over. Oh, y'all knew all about my porno film. And I said, who are you talking about? I didn't know what the hell was going on. And she told me about the kid dragging that thing up. Yeah. And I laughed. I just got beside myself. I said, you know, it, we just, we're all so silly. And just like if how in the hell can I look after you with two broke hips? I don't know. Oh, Lord, well, I'm glad she came out of that because I wasn't expecting the best. Yeah. Yeah. I send her cards and everything. I said, all I do is send cards because I. Here lately, all this mowing and cleaning out here in the yard, I haven't been able to, you know, go by and just visit. Yeah. Well, um, I need to, I'm bad about saying I'm going to send you a tape and then I don't get it for a month, get it in the mail for a month. But um, would you like to have a copy of that? Cat? Cat. Yeah, and the car wash. Uh, the car wash. I need to send a, a copy of the snippets we have put together. One, the first on the snippets is me down in New Orleans when I went to look for Mike. Yeah. And I took the video camera, and I was in the motel room, and I couldn't get it to work, so I called Mark long distance. And I had him on the phone trying to help me figure out why the camera wasn't coming on. Yeah. So then... When I got back home after my trip and we played the tape, when it first come on, there was my eyeball. <laughs> I was looking in the <laughs> Anyway, you know, you could see every wrinkle. I mean, just, <laughs> I was just looking. I said, <laughs> you could hear me talking. I mean, it, it, I said, no. Nothing. The red light's on. And then I got backed off, and then I looked. Then there comes that eyeball again, looking, blinking. I said, no, it's dark. And finally I said, one time I said, well, shit. And then I, I said, well, to hell with it. <laughs> I lost my breath because I never dreamed that was on there. I need to send. All this needs to be put in a book. <laughs> people would not believe it. Well, I'm going to. I said, our life is such that people would think. She said, oh, they wouldn't believe any of this. <laughs> <laughs> God have mercy. But I have lost my little book with all my phone numbers and addresses in it. Uh -huh. Your number was still on my caller ID. Yeah. So I don't have anybody's address anymore. So give me your address. 795 Silver Fur Lane. Grand Cane, Louisiana. 71032. Okay. Yeah, I think Mark's already got one of those made and I can just copy it. Okay. Because it's got Oh, Lord, it's got the eyeball, it's got the cat in the car wash, it's got me falling out of a hammock in North Carolina, and it's got... Well, I saw all the pictures I get uh, in the park. In the park. Yeah, when y'all went somewhere and you fell and... Oh. And I couldn't move. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mom said, are you okay? And I just, I couldn't even move. I just wiggled my butt a little. Well, that was on the same tape. Oh, okay. Bibby's got that. Well, see, we never sit down and look at anything like that. Bless her heart, she just stays in such a, I don't know, I'm worried about her. Yeah. I really am. And it's got me farting real loud. Oh, Lord. At, with Sister and Teen at a cabin, 92 Thanksgiving, and, and it's got us in the canoe turning over. Oh, Lord. So I just need to send y'all one. Uh -huh.
but um, no, I had got so low in June, the end of June, I couldn't even walk through this house without stopping and uh, getting out of breath. And my legs and arms would hurt like I wasn't getting enough oxygen. And I, I thought for sure my heart was giving out on me. What was it? And uh, so I ended up going, I went to my, reg well, I went to my regular doctor because he, my sugar had got up around 4. It was 5.05. Hmm, no wonder you couldn't get it. No, 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 that wasn't it. So he went, I went to him with no insurance and just paid the regular stuff. And he increased my sugar medicine and then I, that getting out of breath and my legs and arms hurting got worse and worse so I went to another doctor and he took a bunch of labs and he called me two days later and said your hemoglobin is 7.6 and it should be 12 to 15 so uh -huh. you, you got half the red blood cells you need that's the way I was for a long time oh I, I I couldn't, it was awful. Uh -huh. So he said, take two iron pills a day with vitamin C. And uh, he said, your heart is beating, trying to beat faster to make up for the oxygen you're not getting yeah. through the red blood cells. And he cut back on a little bit of my heart medication and my blood pressure so my heart could beat a little better. Uh -huh. And uh, after all that, I'm feeling better. Well, you know, Kendall Sue has flebitis. Mm. And uh, she comes home from work, puts on her hose. She works 18 hours a week. Mm. They, um, so, you know, she, she's got um, osteoarthritis. Yeah. And uh, she just suffers so bad. And um, anyway, and Dr. May, along with fibromyalgia, he mm. said, you've got very painful disease. Right. And so, anyway, the doctors decided, all them tests and everything, not to put her on a lot of medication because she'd need it later on. But before Kelstein, she was bothered with this flea battle. Mm. And she comes home, puts on them, you know, stuck, yeah. And lays with her legs propped up. Yeah. Anyway, she mm. wrecked her car, towed it out, mm. and uh, I don't know what else is going to happen. I said, we'd, you know, well, cross that bridge when we get to it. That's right, and God takes care of everything. Oh, yeah. Back tire blew out, and, I mean, she left the road, and that little old car, you know, it, they're not built to take mm -mm. much. Mm -mm. And I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I'm surprised she got out of it alive. Mm-mm-mm. Well, there's, I just have to step out on faith. Oh, yeah, that's all it is. Everything you do. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I just, every day I thank God, and uh, we talk about it, that lady that I work with, and her mother passed away, and uh, anyway, she, and we were talking, she said, we got so much to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, yeah. And I said, I when I get in the tub of hot water, I thank God for hot water. She said, I hadn't thought about that. I'll start thanking God. <laughs> I said, yeah. yeah, that's right. I thought when I lay down at night, I thank God for my bed and oh, the yeah. roof over my head. Yeah, and we're comfortable, and we're, you know. Yeah. And just like we get without lights here, I was without them last night. And, um, you know, we just settle in. Did our little thing. Of course, my dogs, when it gets 8 o'clock, they're ready for bed. And you, they just let everybody know it, and everybody has to go home. And <laughs> I'm telling you. And this little old dog, the Kendall, it, I, I think they can read the clock. <laughs> they're ready to go to bed. Get to take her home and go to bed. So I said, Lord, have mercy. There's something else around here. But... Uh, I just thank God for every day that I'm able to cut grass. And That's Billy right. Billy says, you know, man, keep that up. You just, you know, and all that. And I said, Billy, I said, I feel good, and God gives me the strength to keep going. Yeah, that's right. I'm not going to give up. Mm -mm. No. 
And when I'm at work, I mean, that <clears throat> little job I got, I, I'm, I sit there every day and I say, thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Because I went nine months. Yeah, I know. It's hard. See, I, I tried and tried and tried to get another job. And uh, I sent the state a letter saying that I felt I was being discriminated against because of my age. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the end of the 26 weeks, I got that letter saying if I thought, I, you know, was supposed to get extended time to come in and sign up. I just didn't even bother because mm -hmm. they increased my hours. I work three days, mm -hmm. and uh, I relieve her for vacation and everything. I said, it all comes up, you know, when I get a, kind of a bind. But yeah. right now, I said, everything's working out so good that uh, I really need to be here to mow. Yeah. Well, when I felt so bad and my heart was acting up, yeah. I out. I just worked two days a week for several weeks, yeah. and it was a struggle to do that. But my heart, one Sunday here, um, and I had been to that new doctor about two weeks prior, and I was sleeping in the kitchen all of a sudden. I, uh, you know, just had to sit down, and then my, all at the same time, I got a lump in my throat, and then my heart felt like it would stop for a couple of seconds and then uh -huh. start again. And when it when it didn't beat, I felt just that real quick feeling like you're going to pass out. And that went on all night. And the next morning, Mark was scheduled to fly out to I forget where. So he canceled his flight. And I called the doctor's office, and they said to come on in. So he took me to the doctor. And... Uh, uh, the doctor said I was having PVCs, where premature ventricular contraction, where one beat jumps ahead, uh -huh. like it'll, instead of going bump, 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 it'll go bump, 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 bump. Yeah. It waits for the next one, and that makes it feels like the heart's not beating. Yeah. But he's. Kill that better regular heartbeat. Yeah, I've had, had that for ye years. Yeah, and arrhythmia. Uh, yeah. yeah and Tell Dr. Cavanaugh he had been to that sleep clinic, hmm. and I felt like if Dr. Cavanaugh had known, and they had gone into detail with that hmm. doctor at that sleep clinic, they would never put him to sleep. Yeah. And Dr. May gave me the results of it, and uh, he said, "Now you can do with this what you want." Hmm. In other words, if I want to sue. Yeah. You know, yeah. And uh, I just said, "No, I don't have any intentions of it," and uh, I said, "Because I'm sure Kim didn't tell Dr. Cavanaugh." Yeah. Anyway, Kim was a pissing and a moaning and a whining and everything and wouldn't go to work. She couldn't go to work and all that good stuff. And she went in to Dr. May, and uh, she was sick, and uh, she had a congestion. And I had told him, I said, she has not worked a week since Kim died. <laughs> and uh, he sat her down and talked to her and told her, said, let me tell you something. If anybody was at fault, it was your daddy because he would not do what the doctors said. Mm. And Kim Sue got herself together. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. thank God for that. Yeah. And, um, mm. and I said, you can't blame anybody for uh, somebody's death. That's God's plan, not ours. That, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And I said, there's so many things worse than death. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I I look at God's involvement in everything, oh. bad and good. Yeah. Well, it's his situation, and he's going to heal it regardless. Yeah. And that's a friend of mine. Her husband's got cancer. He started the prostate. He wouldn't go to the doctor, and that spread to the pelvis bone, mm. and the hip bone, mm. and she is just... I mean, devastated about it. He worked for the city, too. And um, I told her she called me uh, Thursday, real upset, said the kids was wanting them to sell their place and move to a smaller place. I said, why? Mm. Well, I wasn't going to be able to keep it up if something happened to Eddie. I said, you don't make that kind of decision now. Right. And I said, don't upset him by even suggesting it. Right. I said, they're not the ones to make the decision. 
Yeah. I said, you and Eddie, and I said, when the time comes, he'll talk it over with you. I said, because Kenneth talked it over with us. Mm. And uh, she said, oh, God, she said, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go through this. I said, yes, you are. Mm -hmm. See, just before Kenneth died, her daddy got killed in a car wreck. Oh. And, uh, you know, she's been through a lot. Her mother died, and her daddy was old, and he had all told her, he said, I, I'm just ready to go be with your mama. Mm -hmm. And uh, just different things. And I said, uh, June, he was preparing y'all. And she said, I don't know if he deliberately pulled out in front of that vehicle mm -hmm. or if it was strictly an accident. Yeah. I believe it was an accident. Yeah. So, anyway, I said, you think you got troubles, just other people. Yeah. Get involved in somebody else's life that's really got troubles. And oh, you. yeah. And uh, this friend of Kendall, he was a pilot out there at Barksdale. And he was an instructor. And this kid he was training was up in the cockpit. And one of the men, you know, that stands in front of the plane tells him when to move. Mm -hmm. Made a move and that boy rolled the plane over oh. the boat and broke his bone. That came out and everything. Mm. And uh, Kenneth Sue went through that and then Kenneth died and he got he went to Denver to um, that hospital up there mm. and therapy and everything. He was close to his mom and them. And his mama died. Mm. Now his daddy's had a stroke. And he is just at his wit's end, begging yeah. Kimball to come up there. Mm -hmm. And she told him, she said, I can't come up there. Mm -hmm. And she said, I got this dog. And he said, we can fly that dog up here. Mm -hmm. He's wanting her to come up there and get married. And she said, oh, no. No. <laughs> I've done that, been there, done that twice. Right. So I don't know what's going to happen there. But the old man, he gets on the phone, asks her to come. I don't believe she'd leave. Well, I told her, I said, you want to go? I said, if that's what you want in your heart, I said, tell me. I said, all this shit can be sold, and I can go. I've got a good income. Mm -hmm. I said, all I do is transfer my bank account. Yeah. I said, you know, it don't bother me. Yeah, you never know what tomorrow may bring. That's right. So, I told her, I said, I can go. Yeah. But she's, you know. That he's too much of a control freak. He's a well, service person. You know how they are. Yeah. Well, since she knows that, that's a, that's yeah, that's um, wouldn't work. Uh -uh. Not with Kendall. Uh -uh. Not with any of us. Uh -uh. No. And I said she just when she wants to just lay and watch TV and not do anything. Mm -hmm. Oh. What she wants to do. That's right. Yeah. So she said. I don't know why anybody thinks that you can't uh, be by yourself and be satisfied. Because <laughs> I, I don't know. I said I am. Because they're not. That's right. And that's just like this girl I work with. She's divorced and uh, just, you know, uh, going around she's with a married man. He's from Eunice. Everything. And she said, I'm going to have to start taking you out and let you loosen up. And I said, I'm perfectly satisfied with my life. Really? I don't need to be entertained. There are lots of people in this world, lots of women, who think their life is not complete without a man in their life. Oh, that's why that Doris Howard, that woman that I worked with at Penny's, and I had her daughter doing my ARs at Benny Key. Mm. This is her fifth one. She's <laughs> buried three. This is her fifth one. And Kendall Sue, it's a man that she grew up with his children and has known them all their life and does his hair, and he, she couldn't believe it when uh, he tied up with Doris. Uh, and uh, I said, oh, Lord, the black widow's going to strike. Uh, and she uh, called me one day from the shop, just rolling, laughing. She said, guess what? And I said, what? She said, Jack's got a pacemaker. I said, oh, do <laughs> <laughs> And she's been trying to get him to sell his house and everything. Oh. Oh. And I told Kendall, I said, she wants that money. Mm-hmm. Get that money in her hand. Oh, she, she's going to do it. She's, she has, said all that stuff belonged to him, and his wife belonged to his children. That's so right. That's right. Yeah. When I felt so bad here thinking I was 
going to check out just any time. I, I went to a lawyer and put Mark's um, name on this deed. So it's... Yeah, power of attorney and everything. So, I mean, what is it, survivor ownership? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've got to go with five succession, so when I sell that third lot, you know, it won't be any problem. Yeah. And um, I called and they told me to bring the deed to all these lots mm -hmm. and uh, copy of the marriage license and uh, the will, you know, me and Kim had a will. Yeah. And uh, powers of attorney and uh, living wills and everything. Yeah. Uh, I've got all the insurance and everything I've got. Changed over to Kim Sue. Yeah. I got all them bonds and bought it in mm. Beneficiary up on my desk. Yeah. So, anyway, I just take care of business. Yeah. And now, when I get to feeling real bad, I don't. Every time before, I'd worry about I hadn't done this or I hadn't done that. Went and made a direct cremation. We went to the place and sign the papers, me and Mark. You are going to be cremated? Yeah. Nice. I don't want a funeral. I want direct cremation. Well, that's kind of piece that don't have a funeral. And don't put it in the paper. He said, the people that cared, you go tell them face to face. Yeah. And let that be it. it it's just a big expense. It's a, well, it's a business. It's well, a business. Well, about it is... Uh, Jen said when she got to the funeral home, her daddy had uh, all the arrangements made, paid for, and everything. And they told her, We're gonna have, you're going to have to get a larger coffin because he's a big person and mm. it's going to cost so and so and so. She said, Wait a minute. She said, He came in here himself and made these arrangements. She said, Why didn't you tell him then? Right. And then it kept on, and they said, Well, it'll be $200 extra because the care of the flowers to the cemetery. And her mm. brother said, let, let me call my attorney. Mm-hmm. And then he ended that shit. Right. Uh-huh. And even Carolyn told me that her boy's got an education. Mm. I said, well, yeah, all this fall to raw and carrying on. I said, it ain't worth nothing. It uh, costs you. Right. It's and a that, business. Yeah, it is. And I, I said, I heard this was a joke, but it's so true. What is the definition of a hypocrite? It's a funeral director trying to look sad. At a six thousand dollar funeral. That's right. And then the six thousand is low nowadays. Oh, I know it. You know what? Uh, Chris Dickles that worked for me, her daddy died, and she went to centuries. And she told that man, she said, "I've got to borrow the money to bury my daddy." And uh, she said, "I want what I can afford." Mm. And they did his funeral, and it was a nice metal coffin and everything for sixteen hundred dollars. See? You tell me. Mm -hmm. You tell me. I, I joined the, memorial, the memor Tennessee Memorial Society, and I helped them do a survey of the funeral homes in Tennessee. Yeah. Because they're kind of a watchdog over the oh, funeral. Home. Yeah. Um, and, and the guy that's one of the officers recommended that crematory to me. Oh, yeah. And, and it's um, here in Nashville, and me and Mark went. So we, you know. Yeah. Well, um, this guy that Rosemary met up with at uh, the Ramada Inn bar, mm -hmm. and uh, she was telling me that he had that Magnolia funeral home and uh, cremation, and I uh, looked it up in the uh, telephone directory. I called him, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I said, do I need to come out there? I said, we've got paid up insurance policies and everything and make arrangements. He said, do you need it now? And I said, no. I said, we're both, you know, all right. He said, no, not until something happens. Mm -hmm. And so when I called him, he took care of everything, and it was $1,080. I think this is $9.99. Well, it was $7.95. Yeah. And I ordered the, you know, I got the urn, and I got the... 15 death certificates. Okay, and yeah. $1,080 altogether. Yeah. And, um, anyway, next day out of the day, she knew he was calling, wanting Kim Sue to go out with him. <laughs> said, God, I think that was his mama. His mother is there at the funeral home with him. And um, Dr. Cavanaugh 
wife is her Sunday school teacher. <laughs> so when she oh. found out, you know, Dr. Kavanaugh was telling the doctor, she said, well, I'm the small world. But she was trying to promote old Chuck and Kendall. Well, well to get to this crematory, you, it's off of a main street, but it's down a side street. Uh -huh. And you go by a uh, Krispy Kreme donut place, and I... I told that lady, we, me and her and Mark were sitting at a table, and I said, I just have one request. She said, what? I said, could I have some Krispy Kreme donuts in there with me? <laughs> and so she got a laugh out of that, and then she said, uh, she showed us um, like this little room where if you want to have a viewing, there's a casket oh, yeah, in there, yeah. but but she said, if you don't want that, just it's whatever you want. Uh -huh. And she said... Um, she said to Mark, said, you can even push the button if you want. <laughs> hey, I want to say something. Becky got killed. Uh -huh. The one that killed got her dog here. Uh -huh. uh, Chuck fixed her and let have a view, and she was killed in a wreck. Mm -hmm. And then he you know, cremated her, and they had this memorial service at this church. Mm -hmm. And he fixed the urn and all the, you know, whatever yeah. with it. Because... Yeah. The urn was picked out was white with blue, you know, ceramic, mm -hmm. and he had the, everything decorated with the blue and white. And uh, Kendall Sue said, "Mommy, it was such a nice service." Yeah. And he directed it and everything and that to minister. But uh, anyway, Kendall Sue said when she went in with uh, Pam and them to, you know, make the arrangements, mm -hmm. said he said, "Oh, sweetie, how have you been?" <laughs> Oh, Lord, I hope this ain't happening to me again. <laughs> but he's a nice person. <laughs> and, uh, but she just, you know, it's not her thing. No, but I just, I just don't, I don't like funerals per se. And I, you know, when mothers, that, that old funeral director was so na ugly uh -huh. that I, Ended up making those stirring frost cakes for him with the ex lax in it. Yeah, I wonder how that turned out. I don't know, but I know it was powerful. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you know, I. Charlotte, I'll tell you what, you know, funerals <laughs> are paganistic. Yeah. And if somebody, it's just like we went to Kenneth's brother's funeral, mm -hmm. and that preacher didn't even know the man. Yeah. And Kenneth sat there, and I took sick. We'd been at the hospital all night with Kenneth with a kidney stone, and they mm. all ended up getting mad because we didn't go to the grave. Mm. But Kenneth had had enough of that creature that didn't even know Dossie. Mm. And I took the drizzling shit and had to go <laughs> to the bathroom when it was all going on. And anyway, he said, don't do me like that. Yeah. Said, what are you talking about? He said, that man didn't even know Dossie. Mm. And they had him up there reading what they wanted, and he didn't even acknowledge all the children uh -uh. or anything. It just, the man was ill at ease. He didn't know them. Right. So, and that's two funerals I've been to where the preacher didn't know. Well, it's a, it's a show for the survivors. That's, that's all right. it is. That's right. And people just go and gawk. Yeah, yeah. I smell my chicken. I better go tend oh, to it. I'm not on my cordless. Oh. <laughs> Love you too. Bye. Bye.